Carlos Soler broke into the Valencia first team as a 19-year-old in the 2016-17 season as an exciting right winger that maybe could be the next star name that Valencia would produce from their academy that could go on to represent Spain or maybe even be sold out for oodles of money. But it wasn't until the 2020-21 season where he was moved into centre midfield to replace the outgoing Danny Parejo where he really grew into his own and started to fulfil his potential and really it went on to captain Valencia became a real general in midfield. His goal and assist contributions went through the roof. He was being the main man on set pieces as as well as the main guy in open play, the playmaker for the team that was leading the charge and really affecting the results for Valencia in a positive way. So was performing so well for Valencia in La Liga that it attracted the interest of Spain. He certainly get caps for the national team and then eventually Paris Saint-Germain as well who whisked him off to French Ligue 1 where unfortunately it was a bit of a poison chalice situation. If you look at his Paris Saint-Germain career you'll see he makes a lot of appearances. There's a lot of times where he does come off the bench but the minute count is low and the position and the role in the team has been ever-changing throughout PSG kind of change of managers over the last couple of years as well as style of play and other players that join them and he has made the move on deadline day to West Ham United and a move that I don't really see or hear anyone else talking about and maybe it's just people like me that maybe know Soler a little bit more that does see the full potential of this transfer. James Ward-Prowse has went on loan to Nottingham Forest and there is a lot of similarities between those two. In the video today we'll be looking at where Soler fits into Lopetegui's West Ham United. We've had three games go so far this season and we've definitely had a lot of early signs on you know the style of play the tactics the philosophy everything that's going to be important to West Ham this year and ultimately what is going to get them success on the pitch at any point in the video today if you do laugh you learn you like something or whatever please do like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this now that we're done with the transfer window we'll be getting much more into the ebbs and flows the comings and goings throughout European football and of course across the Premier League so there's a lot planned on the channel throughout the European season so hit the subscribe button and get into the comment section in this one and let me know if you're a West Ham fan a Premier League fan whatever seeing another Champions League player joining the West Ham ranks really where does this put them now in the pecking order for where people's expectations are for where everyone's going to finish come the end of the season and uh, yeah let's just get stuck straight into it now it took me a few times to get the intro right and I don't think I mentioned it in that cut of it but I actually went to see Valencia in the 2020-21 season uh, it was just after lockdown had been lifted and you know everyone was just like let's get into football as much as possible and I managed to go and see two La Liga games over a weekend uh, thanks to Soraya which was great fun and Carlos Soler was the captain he made uh, two decisive actions on the day I think he got a goal and an assist Valencia won the game it was a lot of exciting uh, it was a very exciting match the Mestalla was a beautiful stadium to go to and visit and I do highly recommend it. Valencia is a great place to go and watch football. And ever since then, like Soler has just been a player that I've really been enamoured with. You know, I was a big fan of him watching him on TV and stuff. But watching him in the in person, like he he has a commander. He's an absolute general of a midfielder. And like I mentioned in the intro, if you look at his ratings out of a hundred over his career at Valencia, he has been a match winner. He's been a match decider for them on so many occasions in the heartbeat of midfield. And the most impressive thing about doing this in La Liga for me is you really need to be equipped on all sides of the game to be that guy in midfield that dictates play, that gets on the ball, that makes things happen and equally can do the other side of the job as well. When La Liga, a very competitive league, you know, it's only second to the Premier League in my estimations. Uh, you know, so for me, this is a very high level player that has had his slippers on really in Paris for the last couple of years. And you can tell he's been chapping at the bit over the last couple of transfer windows to get out and get his career back on track again. And I say that's one of the reasons I'm so excited. Now, I've got on screen here that um, I think this is the way they lined up last time. I think Mavropanos actually started against City, but I'm trying to do a bit of an amalgamation between the depth chart that we've had on the video and now that we've seen a few games uh, for West Ham, kind of where people are and stuff like that. Like I've mentioned, a few times on videos by the way Mikel Antonio will not be moved so many coaches keep picking him uh, you know it's just it's kind of frustrating for West Ham fans I think I think he'd like to see full crew get some minutes maybe that'll happen after the international break now but Antonio still being an important player is um it's just you know something to note at this point but what we did see against City, it's the only time I watched a full 90 minutes for West Ham so far this year. They did fall into this kind of situation that I really suspected Lopetegui would be deploying of having like a really defensive kind of outlook and look to try and counter-attack with Kudus, whoever else was going to be on right wing. So obviously Captain Bowen now and, you know, the arrowhead forward, Antonio Fulkrug, whatever, with Paqueta um, being the glue and being the man everywhere affecting the ball, being the guy to get into the box uh, late and everything else that goes around that. Now, I was, uh, you know, we've seen uh, Suchek start the first two matches. Irvin's been on the bench, I think, if not every game for at least one or two of them or whatever. So he's now made the depth chart. But Soler in here for me is the missing piece 
of this puzzle. Now, I actually had a look overall at West Ham's like net spend or whatever. Me, Sam Ty and Harry Trades got together for a stream. It lasted like three hours or something. I'll link it at the end of this one. It's all timestamped, so you can just jump to the West Ham section or whatever club you want to catch there. But West Ham's net spend is under 100 million for this window. And in the window, they've added Soler, of course, Kilman, Tadebo, Aaron Wan-Bissaka, Guido Rodriguez, Nicholas Fulkrug and Sirencio Somerville. What a window they've had. Now, they've not actually had that many outgoings, only 44 million or whatever, but a net spend of 99 on a really revamped, redeveloped squad to a really high level. Like I've said consistently, like a lot of these guys are Champions League level players coming in. Maybe Kilman, Somerville, these guys are unproven at that level. Obviously, West Ham aren't playing in European football this season, um, but... That's been the standard, you know, that's been the floor the West Ham have been recruiting with and the quality now in their best 11 it rivals so many teams now in the Premier League that despite only having one win from three, it's been really, three really tough games. No one's expecting anything against City, of course. And then Palace and Villa, like on the balance of probability, like if you took a win from one of them, you'd probably be quite content. So it's been like a steady enough start without it being, you know, fireworks and bells and whistles at this point. And, you know, the team that we've seen has been a bit more rigid in the middle with Suchek and with Alvarez supporting Guido here. And what Carlos Soler offers, and I think he is going to come into the best 11 now, what we've seen from Lopetegui so far against like, City, and maybe even against the types of like your, your Villas and your Spurs, these types of teams, maybe it will be Guido and Alvarez, right? But against like the rest of the league. Now, I'm only sticking with Guido because he's played the most minutes so far. And I know West Ham fans, you guys love Alvarez. I get that, right? He's a great player and all the rest of it, right? He's quality. But Guido's been playing all the games, so I'm just going to stick with it as Guido. Maybe it's Alvarez. It's probably a coin flip if we're being honest with each other. But what Soler offers is a, a player that, like I mentioned in the intro, started his life as a right winger. So we're probably going to see him on the right side of the pitch more often than not. And, you know, he's he's not electric. He's not really that quick, to be honest with you. And when he goes into midfield, it then allowed him to maybe kind of just get a bit stronger hit the gym a bit more perhaps and what he offers is that sort of guy that has played on the wing before so is a very forward thinking player like naturally inherently in his kind of DNA and all the rest of it so starting in a midfield position where he doesn't mind getting into a tackle he'll be put on the ball by his defence and he's quite comfortable under a press to maybe find the relief player whether that be the full back or a big switch of play he's got a great range of passing absolute wand of a foot on himself as well but then in the counter attack in the transition like he will take yards like he will attack he will go forward he will carry the ball he can dribble by people and then from here like i've mentioned like he's got such a great range of passing and he's got a great eye for a goal that you know he's a playmaker he wants to put the ball on a plate for players running through at the back post or for overlapping players wide or directly down the channel for a striker maybe running on the edge of the offside trap and alongside Paqueta you've now got somebody else who can carry the workload and that's what I was saying in previous West Ham videos that Ward Prowse has that set piece capability where you know any dead ball with the height and the strength that this team has and, you know, even directly shooting on goal from about 20 yards or so is a real weapon and gets goals and assists, gets goal scoring opportunities given to you, granted. But mobility wise and physically and all the rest of it, he's not really got that ability to really be a progressive transition box to box midfielder like Carlos Soler does. And I think this is a huge upgrade as a result because Soler, make no mistake about it, has the capabilities to do everything that Ward Prowse was able to do in terms of take all the corners, bang them in from range, you know, even the, the longer free kicks, like hit them in for essentially like they're a corner, you know, you put the, the big guys up on the back post and they'll run in uh, for the cross. And I think that, you know, alongside Guido, Paqueta, Kudus, like there's such a high talent level across this squad now that... West Ham must be going into so many games super confident. I would like to see Soler come into the team sooner rather than later. And one thing I did want to include as a little footnote in this video is in his time in PSG, when Soler actually started to get like a couple of starts on the bounce a couple of times, it was filling in an emergency fullback at right and at left back at times. We're not talking about a lot of appearances, but something wacky like that, if it does happen, don't panic because he's probably going to do quite fine. I wouldn't imagine him ever covering right back with Kufal and Aaron wan -Bissaka. But, you know, I know Emerson isn't everyone's cup of tea. I think, you know, when I watched him against City, he certainly didn't look like completely out of his depth or anything like that. And, you know, he's got definitely good numbers for his forward contributions. But, you know, like if something wacky did happen, all I'm saying is I wouldn't panic or freak out about it. He's, he's definitely done that sort of thing. And if there was a more of an evolution of an inverted fullback situation, perhaps, or something like that, then uh, Soler was 
probably one of the best available on the market you could try and harness that with you know although i don't think that's going to happen but it's just a, a footnote I, w I wanted to add into this but you know like he is like now going to be a very important player for west ham because he is probably one of the and i know suchek has maybe got a wee bit of that bull in a china shop effort to him where he can travel up the pitch and you know fine whatever but solaire alongside paqueta like this is like a real game changer and there's not many premier leagues across the across the league like you know, probably Newcastle is a team that springs to mind, especially now with Tenali back available. But previously, even when it's been uh, Bruno Guimaraes and like Joe Linton and you look at Aston Villa with like Douglas Louise and John McGinn or Telemans, you know, if once you've got a few midfielders that really have more than one string to their bow, you know, where they're a really great tackler, they're really a good leader, they've got good positional awareness, whatever. But then they've also got the forward element to their game. Or like Paqueta is a really great final third midfielder that you want to have in your team. But he is not a slouch. He will get back and cover into the, the, the spaces, whatever they might be, um, when West Ham aren't in possession. And the more these players you stack up, that quality compounds on itself. And West Ham, like, I just really don't see them. One of the things you're going to get with this sort of team is they've got a lot of guys, Guido, Tadebo, Soler, Paqueta, like all the guys that they've had kind of coming in, even Caduce formerly of Ajax, of course, full crew at Borussia Dortmund, even Somerville, it leads to a much lesser extent because it's a tier two league, of course. But these guys are all used to winning more games than they lose, which is where West Ham want to be and kind of have been over the last couple of years qualifying for Europe and all the rest of it. But they've all been part of teams as well that want to be getting into European football, want to be testing themselves at the weekend and midweeks. And really a lot of these players have been operating in a lot of leagues across Europe at the very top end of it. And so many successful Premier League squad builds or whatever you want to call it that we've seen over the years. I've got guys that at other clubs were captains. There were guys at other clubs won things, you know, and the more of those leaders, the more of those winners that you really get into your squad, it's kind of the Ancelotti Real Madrid thing, you know, where, <laughs> you know, under Zidane they've won three Champions Leagues in a row and, they've, you know, they've, it's already a full squad of inherent winners and leaders, you know, and what every other team in world football is trying to do. And that's when they talk about players personality and what they're like in the changing room and what they're like on the training pitch and whatever it's that winning mentality it's that leader influence and not everyone can be a big talker and all the rest of it but it's even the experience for some of these guys if they are quieter it's not everyone about being shouty you know stuff you don't need me explaining this to you but the more of this you get in the changing room the more winning and the more dominance becomes like a normal expected thing and uh, the level of some of the tertiary players in this situation, like Kilman, has started like a house on fire and really like made his transfer fee seem a bit more worthwhile than, you know, maybe some people would have gave it credit for. He really seems like a really good fit in this overall system. And if we get that level of success translate to a lot of the other players that people would hold in way higher esteem than Max Kilman just on the face of it, then, you know, like really like West Ham. I'm really looking forward to seeing the point where they've got two, three, four wins on the bounce and seeing how the rest of the league is sitting. And I think at that point you can get a real good, you know, gauge on like, wow, West Ham are going to do whatever it might come to be at that. Yeah, like I think this addition here for Solaire has been very undersold and you know not really heralded enough around the place. And that's going to change when he gets on the pitch. You heard it here first, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more content like this. On screen and now some other stuff that I've made that YouTube thinks you might enjoy. Uh, stay out of trouble and I will catch you on the next one.